Proudly we hail. From New York City, where the American stage begins, here is another program with a cast of outstanding players. Public service time has been made available by this station for your Army and your Air Force to bring you this story as proudly we hail the United States Military Academy at West Point. Our story is entitled, Hundredth Night, the story of an important milestone in cadet life at West Point. Our first act curtain will rise in just a moment, but first, we all share freedom, help share its defense. The motto is new, but the call it sounds is as old as the history of our country. Today, as we stand strong and alert against communism, the United States Army is calling for qualified young men and women to join the freedom team and become Army technical specialists. You will be trained in the latest techniques using the finest equipment, and you'll be building a rewarding career for yourself. For full information, visit your nearest United States Army and United States Air Force recruiting station. The time is now. And now your Army and your Air Force present the proudly we hail production, 100th Night. A hundred nights till June. To every cadet at West Point, there's a certain magic in that phrase. To the lowest plebe, it means a hundred nights until recognition, until he becomes an upperclassman. To the yearling, who a year ago was himself a plebe, it means a hundred nights until summer leave, the only really long vacation he gets in his four years at the point. To the first classman, it means most of all. For him, it is a hundred nights until June week. Graduation the successful completion of a hard job in the beginning of a promising career. But to the second classman, West Point's junior class, 100th night weekend is probably the least important. June only means the beginning of the last year at the academy. There's a tough summer of training in front of them and a long academic year to follow. To the second classman, 100th night is just another milestone. Nothing much to celebrate. To every second classman, that is, but one. I'm Robert Marlowe, a cadet corporal and a second classman, Company A-2, United States Corps of Cadets. I want to tell you why 100th Night Weekend turned out to be the most important in my life. See, I come from a small town about 60 miles from Los Angeles. For nearly three years now, I've been here at the point, 3,000 miles from home. When I wrote that letter to Diane asking her to come east for 100th night, I never expected her to say yes. She'd never come east to visit me before, even though we've considered ourselves engaged since we were in high school. And then the letter came. Darling Bob, of course I'll come. Surprised? I can't say that I blame you. But even before your letter came, Daddy and I were talking about you. Your ears should have been burning. Anyhow, I won't spoil it by saying another word until I see you. Bob, doesn't that sound wonderful? Until I see you. I've already got my plane reservation, and I'll meet you Saturday afternoon. Until then, darling, all my love, Diane. P.S. You call it 100th Night Weekend. What a funny name. Does it mean something? <laughs> The morning her letter arrived, I doubt if I touched ground once. I never knew a week to pass so slowly. But finally, it was Saturday. Mess was over, and I was on my way to Grant Hall, where I knew Diane would be waiting. Uh, uh, excuse me. Yes, ma'am? I'm looking for Bob Marlowe. 
Uh, that is Cadet Robert Marlowe. Do you know what company he's in? Oh, dear. Uh, does does A2 make any sense? Yes, ma'am. I'll put a call in for him. Oh, would you? I was supposed to meet him here, and I don't see... A... Bob! Oh, never mind, he's here. Yes, ma'am. Uh, Diane! Diane! <laughs> oh, hey, let me look at you a minute. Oh, boy, a million bucks. Oh, boy. Bob, you look beautiful. Hey, now, wait a minute. That's my line. Oh, but this is the first time I've ever seen you in uniform. <laughs> yeah. Oh, I nearly forgot. Diane, I want you to meet Joe Kuttner. He's my roommate. Oh, oh it's nice to meet you, Joe. Well, now I can understand it. Understand what? Why, Bob keeps murmuring Diane in his sleep every night. <laughs> Do you, Bob? Well, if Joe says so. <laughs> <laughs> well, I've been to third party in this party long enough, so I'll see you back in the room, Bob. Oh, don't feel you have to run off, Joe. Well, I got a drag waiting for me around here someplace myself. Drag? Oh, oh, you mean your date? Yeah, I'll see you later, Diane, at the hop. I hope so, Joe. I know so. Your hop card's on Bob's desk, and I've filled in my name for five dances. I'll see you later. <laughs> He's very nice. Oh, yeah, the best. Darling, would they fine you or arrest you or something if I kissed you? Well, let's find out. <laughs> is that the best you can do? Well, in the middle of Grand Hall, it is. <laughs> uh, just you wait. Now, what about our tour? What do you want to see first? Uh, Column Hall? Battle Monument? Flirtation uh, Walk? Just you, Bob. I want to talk to you. <laughs> uh, can we talk here? Why not? Here's some comfortable chairs. Come on. All right. You know, you are beautiful. Oh, no, don't look at me that way, Bob. I, I can't think straight. Well, who wants to think straight? I do. I want to tell you this in just the right way. Oh, hey, now, that sounds like the start of a Dear John letter. <laughs> All right, if your ego needs bolstering. I haven't looked at another boy since high school, and I love you to pieces. How's that? <laughs> well, that's more like it. You know what I ought to do right now? Now, Bob, behave. I still want... I want to... Speak my piece. Okay, I'll listen. Now, what's so important and exciting? It's about us, Bob. Well, I didn't think it'd be about a couple of strangers. Well, that's what I'm afraid of, that it might get to be about a couple of strangers. You don't get a summer leave this time, do you? Well, not until a year from June when I get my commission. Then I won't see you again for over a year. Well, I'll get home Christmas for a few days. That's dandy. Merry Christmas. Oh, now, come on, Diane. We had an understanding about this when I first got my appointment. We knew it wasn't going to be easy for either of us, but you agreed to wait. I was 17 then, Bob. When, when you're 17, you think you've got all the time in the world. Well, it was only three years ago. Only? Do you know how many times we've seen each other since then? You came home for a few days at Christmas in 1951. No, there was summer leave last year. And another few days last Christmas, only you had the flu and couldn't come home. That's all, Bob. You might as well have been on another planet. I'll admit it's been tough, but it's almost over now. Is it? This is the big weekend up here, hundredth night. I asked you in my letter if it meant something. Well, it means there are just a hundred nights until June. Not for us. It's a hundred nights plus a whole year until June for us. Oh, it'll go quickly, Diane. First class year always does. For you, maybe. Not for me. I can't wait another year, Bob. Oh? I'm, I'm sorry, Bob. I, I didn't mean to come out this way. I'm telling it all wrong. How do you tell it right? Now, stop looking so hurt. It really is good news, darling. We don't have to wait another year at all. What do you mean? We don't have to wait, Bob. We can get married right away. What? It's what you want, isn't it? Well, honey, it's what I want more than anything in the world. You know that, but there are three things a cadet can't have. A dog, a mustache, and a wife. We just have to wait. That's what I'm trying to tell you, darling. Bob, I want you to resign. Resign? No, no wait, don't say anything yet. This isn't some silly notion of mine. It's something I've been thinking about for a long time. I, I knew you'd never do it unless there was some very good reason. But now there is. What reason could there be? Remember remember what I wrote in the letter about the long talk I had with Dad? His plants going back into full production. Government work. They're going to build literally thousands of new jet planes. What's that got to do with me? Everything. He expects to be busier than ever now. He needs an assistant. 
A young, intelligent, capable man. Now, wait a minute, Diane. Oh. I can't throw away all the work I've done just like that. But you can throw me away just like that. No, no, I'm not throwing you away. I couldn't. You are, Bob. This is a chance that comes just once. That's all. You, you miss it and it's gone. Oh, I'll have a job when I get out. Will you have a girl, too? Now, you don't mean that. Diane, do we have to thrash this out right now? We don't want to spoil our fun tonight. Bob, listen to me. I didn't fly 3,000 miles for the hundredth night hop. Th this is more important than any dance. You've got to make a decision and... Well, I... I suppose it comes down to... just how much you want me. So that was the beginning of the weekend I'd been looking forward to for so long. I still can't remember exactly what I said to Diane after that. All I knew was that I felt as though some sort of weight was constricting my chest. I do remember going back to barracks to change into full dress. Diane and I were going to dinner at the Thayer Hotel and I'd promised to give her my answer then. Joe was there crawling a plebe from down the hall. Mr. Pearson, you're the grossest plebe in this section. You know that, don't you? Yes, sir. Seven months at the academy, and you still don't know how to take a brace. Yes, sir. The chin, mister, the chin. Pull it in. Until you can spit on your heels. That's better. Who does a plebe rank, mister? Sir, a plebe ranks the superintendent's dog, the commandant's cat, and all the waiters in the mess hall. All right, then. So you're not the lowest form of animal life after all, and stand up like you were proud of yourself. That clear? Yes, sir. Hi, Joe. Hi. Hey, Bob, I was just telling my drag about Diane. She is certainly a smooth-looking girl. Oh, thanks. What time is it, mister? Sir, I am deeply embarrassed and greatly humiliated that due to unforeseen circumstances over which I have no control, the inner workings and hidden mechanisms of my chronometer are in such in accord with the great sidereal movement by which time is reckoned that I cannot with any degree of accuracy state the exact time, sir. But without fear of being very far off, I will state that it is 25 minutes... Fifteen seconds and four ticks after the eighteenth hour, sir. Very good, mister. That's what I got, Bob. Six twenty-five. What time you pick up Diane at the theater? Seven. The man about to drag his one and only to the big event of the season. You don't look very happy. Knock it off. All right, Mr. Pearson, dismissed. Yes, sir. None of my business, but what happened? Right? No. Joe, how many copies is it you submit for a letter of resignation? Six copies to be submitted to the company tactical officer to be forwarded through channels to the commandant of cadets. Hey, did you say resignation? Well, I thought it was seven copies. Maybe I didn't hear you right. You did say resignation, didn't you? You know, Joe, it's a funny thing. Lots of times in the past three years, I've felt pretty low. Homesick, maybe, or just plain disgusted. And all the time, all I needed to chuck the whole mess was to write a letter with six copies. What got into you? Well, didn't you ever feel like resigning? Who doesn't? Once in my plebe here, I actually wrote the letter. But even when I was writing it, I knew I wasn't going to send it in. Joe, where do you expect to be in 20 years? Me? I don't know. Pulling down a snappy 12 grand a year? It's eating money. I can get that much right now. This year. How? Inherit it? Earning it? Doing a job that needs to be done? That's what we're supposed to be training for here, to do a job that needs to be done. Well, there's more than one way to do a job. No kidding. Now, where's all my paper? Are you really going to write that letter? Listen, have you got any paper I can borrow? I'll pay you back. Yep. Here. And you don't have to pay it back. <laughs> You are listening to the proudly we hail production, Hundredth Night. We'll return in just a moment for the second act. Today, you young men of America have an excellent opportunity to learn a trade that will assure your future. The many fine technical schools of the United States Army are training men in such interesting fields as radio, radar, meteorology, mechanics, electronics, and many others. You can become a qualified technician trained to do an important job and do it right. For full details about an exciting career, visit your nearest United States Army and United States Air Force recruiting station. There's no obligation, so plan ahead. Face your tomorrow today.
You are listening to Proudly We Hail. And now we present the second act of Hundredth Night. I wrote my official letter of resignation and with that numb feeling you sometimes have when you dream of walking. I gathered together all six very official copies and deposited them on the desk of Captain Gaynor, our company tactical officer. After that, I walked down to the fair for my dinner with Diane. I don't imagine I made very much sense at the table. You're hardly touching your dinner, Bob. What's the matter? Oh, nothing's the matter, honey. The dinner's fine. Bob, there's a cadet wearing a red sash and some kind of white belt across his chest. Hey, he's coming across the dining room toward you. Do, do you know it? Let me see. Oh, yeah, that's a sergeant of the guard. What does he want with me? Marlowe, Ari. I'm sorry to break in on you. Captain Gaynor wants to see you at once in his office. Captain Gaynor? Who's he? My company tactical officer. I'm afraid I'll have to go right over. Oh, that's all right, darling. I'll wait for you here. I don't mind at all. Come in. Marlowe, R.E. reporting as ordered, sir. At ease, Mr. Marlowe. Have a seat. Thank you, sir. Sorry to break in on your date. I'll try not to keep you long. That's all right, sir. You can guess why I sent for you. About my letter, sir? Your letter of resignation from the Corps of Cadets. Is it in order, sir? Oh, yes. Very well presented. Mr. Marlowe, how long have you been thinking of resigning? Well, sir, I... About three hours, sir. I see. Mr. Marlowe, you present a very good argument here for the acceptance of the resignation. You state that uh, you wish to resign to take an important post in an industry vital to our national defense. Yes, sir. I don't see any mention here of the girl. Sir? Come now, Marlowe. Until a few hours ago, you were one of the most proficient cadets in this company. Your girl arrives from California, and suddenly you submit a letter of resignation. You trying to tell me there's no connection between these facts? Well? No, sir. I... There is a connection. I'm in love with her, sir. You didn't marry her secretly, did you? No, sir. Marlo, I haven't any right to talk to you like a Dutch uncle, but I'm going to anyway. I, I hate to see this happen to you. You were slated to be company commander next year, you know. Doesn't mean much, does it? Not now, sir. You stand high in your class. I, I know all that, Captain. I know what I'm giving up. I've, I've thought it over pretty carefully. For three whole hours? Yes, sir. I'd like to meet this girl of yours, Marla. She must be a remarkable person. I'd be happy to introduce you, sir, any time. Shouldn't have said that, should I? Very well, Mr. Marlowe. I'll initial the papers and forward them through channels. That'll be all. Yes, sir. <laughs> I left the office and went back to the fair to pick up Diane. We started out together from the hotel for the long walk back to the gym for the hop. It was a cold night and I thought I could feel Diane shiver inside her fur evening wrap, but she insisted on the walk. I was boiling inside with a kind of unreasonable anger and I thought I'd never feel cold again. As we approached the gym, our footsteps slowed, almost as if by mutual consent. You sure you're not cold? Uh-huh. We're almost there anyhow. Oh, that's the gym up ahead. Very impressive. Bob, are you sorry? Well, why should I be sorry? You'll never regret it. Oh, do you think I'd regret having you? You know, if we stand out here in the cold too long, we'll freeze. Bob... Before we go inside, I want to be sure of one thing. Oh, now, your hair looks perfect. No, no, I mean about you. I don't want you ever to think I made you do something that wasn't right for you. Honey, are you still worrying about that? In a few days, I'll be out of this, this straitjacket. A free man, my own boss. No more bugles and bells to call me to formation. No more getting up before six. Is that something to be sorry about? Diane, when this is all behind me, I'll be tickled to death. Now... That answer your question. All right, darling, we can go in now. 
You've convinced me. Even if you haven't convinced yourself. May I cut in, Joe? Uh-oh, look who's back again, Diane. You know, I think this guy really likes you. <laughs> Glutton for punishment. All right, come on, guy, get lost. Okay, okay, I'm going. I'm on your card for number five, Diane. I'll be back. Oh, you bet, Joe. Well... Are going to dance? Well, you know, I just happened to notice. We're right near the door. How about a nice breath of fresh air? In the lobby? All right. Nice breath of stale air, then. <laughs> okay. You see, I'm getting selfish in my old age. I like to have you to myself. Good evening, sir. Huh? Oh, good evening, mister. Uh, sir, excuse me. Well, mister, what is it? Sir, may I ask you a question? Sure. Oh, Diane, this is Mr. Pearson. A plea from my company. Hello. You dragging a girl to the house? Uh, no, ma'am. I'm on duty here. Plebes aren't allowed to go to house. Oh, that's right. I forgot. Another of those silly rules. Well, what's the question, mister? Sir, there's a rumor in our section that you're resigning from the corps. The rumor's true. I've submitted a letter to Captain Gaynor. Oh. What's the matter, mister? Don't you approve? Well, I don't have any right to approve or disapprove, sir. But you... you don't approve, do you? You think Bob's making a mistake? Well, I... It's all right, mister. Tell her what you think. Yes, I'd like to hear. All right, ma'am. Oh, please, don't call me ma'am. I'm sorry. Look, mister, I won't be around here June week to recognize you. Suppose I do it now. No, you don't have to do that, sir. I want to, Mr. Pearson. Shake. Yes, sir. And never mind the sir. Yes, sir. Uh, I mean, okay. Pearson, every plebe has a chance to tell off an upperclassman on 100th night. Well... This is your chance. I don't want to keep the young lady standing in the lobby Oh, here. don't mind me. Besides, I'm fascinated. I want to hear what you're going to say. I don't feel very much like saying it now. You won't like it. If you're going to tell Bob he's making a mistake and should change his mind, I certainly won't like it. That isn't what I was going to say. Well, come on. Out with it. You're doing the right thing to resign. Well, there, Bob, you see... Why do you say that, Pearson? I'll lay it right on the line. You don't need the core, and so the core doesn't need you. Well, you are telling me off, aren't you? You asked me to, sir. Okay. Anything else? The only reason anybody's here in the first place is to train for a service career, right? Everyone is expected to serve his country one way or another. Yes, sir, but not necessarily at West Point. <laughs> there, darling, you see? It's just what I've been telling you all along. There are lots of ways to serve your country. And frankly, sir... If you're the type who chuck everything the first time a better offer comes along, well, you're just not good officer material. That isn't fair. Bob would have made a wonderful officer. Besides, he's going to do a lot more good where he's going. There's an inscription carved in the wall here in the gym. Did you ever read it? No. He means the MacArthur quotation. You can see it right up there. That's right, miss. You look at it. I don't have to. I memorized it. It says... Upon the fields of friendly strife are sown the seeds that upon other fields on other days will bear the fruits of victory. If you don't believe that, I guess you just don't belong here. The Academy means a great deal to you, doesn't it? I guess it's the most important thing that ever happened to me. Pearson, you're going to make a darn good officer. Afraid not, sir. I'm not going to get my commission. What are you talking about? I'm deficient in math and English. Barring a miracle, I expect to be found before the end of the month. You mean flunk out? That's right. I'm sorry, Pearson. I, I didn't know that. So, we'll be civilians together. Wish I were as happy about it as you are. Pearson? No. Oh, I've got to go. If I don't see you again, good luck to both of you. Right here, sir. Well... Want to go back inside? I don't feel very much like dancing now. Neither do I. What about our walk? Could we take it now? I'll get your wrap. In memory of the officers and men of the regular Army of the United States 
who fell in battle during the Civil War, this monument is erected by their surviving comrades. Battle monument. You've probably seen it in the newsreels. Oh. What are those lights over there? North Barracks. You know, it reminds me of a little two-line poem I read once in a back issue of The Pointer. It goes, uh, West Point and joy and pain and barracks lights across the plain. Bob, he wasn't right, was he? Who? The plebe. He said you weren't good officer material. I guess he was. No, he wasn't. You aren't the type to throw away your ideals for the first good offer that comes along. Not for an offer, Diane. For you. And it was just for me. You didn't really want to do it at all. But... No, no, Bob, don't. I... I didn't have the right to ask you to resign, did I? Every right. I want to marry you, Diane. Do you know what you should have done, Bob? You should have told me to go jump in the Hudson. I had no business asking you to give up the career you'd chosen. Well, it's done now. Is it? Couldn't you withdraw the letter? Well, Captain Gaynor wouldn't forward it before Monday morning. I might be able to catch him tonight before taps, but... What about the job with your father? Did you really want the job? Well, no, but you said you couldn't wait another year. Nobody can see into the future, Bob, but... I, I think I can see this much, at least. If you married me now, you'd stick to your bargain. That's the kind of guy you are. But I've got a funny hunch there'd be times when I'd have trouble meeting your eyes. Diane, listen. No, Bob, you listen. One hundred days from now, it'll be June. Four hundred and sixty-five days from now, you'll be up here in your ice cream pants and your brass buttons and your gold chevron. You'll shake hands with the general and he'll hand you your commission. You know where I'll be. Where? Down there somewhere. So darn proud I'll be bawling my eyes out. Young man, here's news about an important opportunity for you. Right now, the United States Army has an urgent need for qualified technicians to operate and service the complex equipment that science has brought into being. The need is vital, and you can be trained in such interesting career fields as radio, electronics, radar, photography, meteorology, mechanics, and many others. Here's your chance to acquire a skill that will be of value to your country and help you in civilian life. For full details, visit the recruiting sergeant at your nearest United States Army and United States Air Force recruiting station today. This has been another program on Proudly We Hail, presented transcribed in cooperation with this station. Proudly We Hail is produced by the Recruiting Publicity Center for the United States Army and United States Air Force Recruiting Service. This is Kenneth Banghart speaking and inviting you to tune in the same station next week for another interesting story on Proudly We Hail. <laughs>